Hello, Billboard Church. Uh, good to see you here today, uh, tonight, for a Bible study. If you have your Bibles, you can turn to Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40 tonight. I uh, shared on my Facebook Live video today. We're preaching on a, on, on, on a message entitled, Are You Soaring or Are You Flapping? Are You Soaring or Are You Flapping? And uh, we'll look at that in just a second. But as you're turning there, again, let's continue to pray for little Eva Gray. Uh, I talked to Miss Deborah this morning, and She's got treatments every day this week. Uh, her hair has started to fall out, uh, but she's going through life with a big smile, and she's been very positive. You know, as a three-year-old, she's teaching us lessons uh, how to go through these storms in life. And, uh, you know, she's been such an uplifting encouragement in this time. Just for three years old, wow, uh, what a three-year-old could teach us here. Uh, but we certainly want to pray for her and Jason and Patience and I told Deborah we would certainly mention that tonight. So uh, let's do pray for, for that family. Uh, let's pray for these treatments to work and eradicate the cancer. Uh, we know who holds Eva's hands. Uh, we trust uh, in our Lord and Savior and his plan. So let's keep praying for her. Uh, Miss Laura Stancil uh, is doing well as of my last report uh, from Sandy. And so she was in the hospital but doing good. But because of some rules with Brookdale, she had to sit there for a few more days. Uh, she should be back, back to Brookdale now. I haven't heard word on that, but uh, we certainly want to pray for Miss Laura Stansel. Uh, do continue to remember her uh, in prayer. Also continue to remember Miss Lucy in prayer. That is Brother Billy's uh, mother. Uh, she is back in the hospital, as we reported last week, and uh, she is going. She's had ups and downs in the hospital there now, praying to find a, a rehab place for her. So be much in prayer for Billy and Carol and their family as they try to help Miss Lucille. Uh, we certainly want to pray for Miss Lucille, so continue to remember them in prayer. And uh, But other than that, uh, we do want to pray for one another in these days. Uh, as I said in my Facebook Live video, we are working on a plan for reopening, and that will be uh, letting you know what's going on here soon. We're putting some fine-tuned and tweaks on that plan and, and trying to make sure it's the safest bet. And also, it'll, it'll pretty much coincide with the, with the phases of, of our state, and actually it's probably going above and beyond even that. Just... You know, again, uh, the fence is here. We want to be over here. I hope that makes sense to everybody. We're not going to be right up on that fence, okay? We're going to be right here safe. And so I believe that our plan does that, and uh, we'll be letting you know about that here soon. But until then, we'll continue to do these live videos in our drive-in church on Sunday at 1030. Uh, all right, Isaiah chapter 40, one of my favorite Old Testament passages uh, I think I looked in my notes. The last time I preached on this passage was about eight years ago. Uh, so uh, it's been about eight years ago. And I, I, I kind of pulled a, a little illustration that I used in that sermon and expounded it into a whole message tonight because I, it really spoke to my heart. I'll tell you where this kind of started. Um, well, matter of fact, uh, let's go ahead and read the text and then we'll, we'll get into it. But Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 31, the Bible says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. I don't know about you, but I want to be that. There's a specific group of people mentioned here. He says, but they that wait on the Lord. I want to be they. I hope you want to be they. And, uh, but anyway, as, as I was uh, starting this message, or uh, thinking about this passage, uh, me and Brother Vince was outside getting the parking lot ready for drive-in church on a Saturday afternoon. And as we were standing here, a big old eagle come flying over us. I mean, we, we kind of stood there in amazement. I love watching eagles in the wild. As a matter of fact, it was probably the first eagle I'd ever seen in a long, long time uh, in the wild. But he perched up on one of those dead trees along our ditch bank on our church property. And we got a chance to really just watch the majestic animal and Boy, God's creation is wonderful. But it got me thinking about this passage, and uh, that's been probably about a month ago now. So I've been mulling this passage around in my head for a month, and I just want to be an encouragement to you today. And uh, I know that uh, this passage will, if you'll just listen to what God's trying to teach us. Uh, so let's pray and ask God to help us tonight and uh, understand this passage, and the Lord will speak to our hearts. Father, we thank you for this night. We thank you for Bible study. We thank you for your word that guides us and directs us and encourages us in the storms of life. Lord, we're surely going through a trying time right now. Uh, we hear 
bad news left and right at every corner and uh, food shortages and jobs quitting and uh, places shutting down and we, we, we hear uh, delaying of reopening and all these other things that we hear, Lord, and a lot of times we get discouraged and, and Lord, we, we, we tend to panic trying to navigate through this world in which we live. Lord, help us to understand that there's a way that you would have us navigate this life. And Lord, I pray that we would be people who soar and not flap. I'm talking to a lot of people tonight that are flapping their wings in exhaustion when you have built us to soar. So Lord, help us to be those that soar and not those that flap. In your precious and holy name we do pray, amen and amen. Isaiah the prophet here in context is warning the people of Jerusalem uh, of its impending fall in captivity. Jerusalem is getting ready to uh, become captives as a result of their sin and the judgment of God. God is judging them. He is going to send uh, captivity their way. He is going to destroy Jerusalem. It's going to be taken over. And so he's warned them through the prophet Isaiah uh, as a result of God's judgment on them. And that's a sermon for another day. But in context here, uh, he's telling them that trouble is coming, but they have someone they can depend on in the midst of the captivity, in the midst of the sorrow, in the midst of the destruction, in the midst of the trouble that they're getting ready to face. He says, Isaiah tells them that God has told him that there's a, there's a way to navigate these troubled waters that are coming. This storm that is getting ready to attack them, this proverbial storm, by way of the captives. They're coming in and they're going to uh, wreak havoc on Jerusalem. And uh, But he's letting them know that, that even though it's going to be a hard time, troubling times are coming. There's a way in the midst of the trouble to navigate. And he, he, he allows that that, that idea to permeate by using the illustration of one of God's most majestic animals, the eagle. Now, as we look at eagles, a lot of you probably may not even know that eagles are known to even soar through hurricanes. They've been observed being almost motionless, soaring through the sky in the midst of some of the most horrific storms they're not out there doing this number right here, <laughs> trying to keep up as the winds are blowing. They're not out there doing that. They're doing this number. Almost the, the, the way the, 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 the thing I read uh, for this, uh, just studying on the eagles, they, the, the words, the phrase that they used was almost motionless. And they're just sitting there. And they only move the tips of their wings to adjust the way they fly. So it's almost motionless. Uh, even through the roughest storms that this earth may bring, the eagle is still soaring. It's no accident that God chose the eagle here in the context of trouble in this passage. God could have took, why didn't God use the robin? Why didn't God use the sparrow? Well, we know that they're known by flying, by flapping. They're, they, they exert their self, their exertion in flying as they flap. And, uh, but the eagles are known for their soaring. The eagles do not flap frantically like the sparrow or the robin. Well, there's a reason why God chose the eagle over the robin or the sparrow to illustrate how to navigate through troubled times. Uh, God created the eagle, and he knows. Uh, he knows why he selected the eagle. We're going to look at that tonight. So I ask you, you know, we're, we, we're all in a storm right now. We're all in troubled times. How are we navigating that? How are we dealing with all this stress? How are we dealing with all this trouble, this pandemic? Are we flapping our wings frantically in trouble? Are we distressed? Are, are we heavy hearted? Are we worried and wrecked? Are we in trouble? Is this storm tossing you to and fro? Are, are you just at a point where you just feel like you can't flap anymore? Like the sparrow and the robin in a hurricane? Is that you tonight? I want you to understand something about you and I who have trusted the name of Christ. We were not built. We were not created. We were not changed by the glory of God to flap. We were created to soar. God has created his children to be soars, not flappers. And I wonder tonight, are you flapping frantically? Or are you soaring in trust? 
and waiting upon God. I ask you the question tonight, are you soaring or are you flapping? It's the title of the message. Are you soaring or are you flapping? How are you navigating the storm of this pandemic? How are you getting through this time? Now, I'm telling you, I've told you this several weeks now, the best thing you probably could do is, is turn the media box off, turn the media garbage mess off, and, and just trust the Lord because, man, I'm telling you, you get all kinds of crazy mess. Wear a mask? Don't wear a mask. <laughs> uh, stay shut in? Don't stay shut in. And a lot of these guys are the same people who are saying both things. It's frustrating, it's frustrating, doesn't it? It does frustrate me. You know, and I think about, man, what, do these bozos even know what they're doing? You know, sometimes that comes to me. Uh, I'm sure that thought has come to you a time or two. Uh, and then you hear all this stuff about the food shortages and you hear all this other thing. I mean, I'll just be honest with you. This has been a stressful time for our country and our world. Uh, and I, I would say stressful time for the church as well. I mean, we, we've got a lot of obstacles and we still have a lot of obstacles to face. Just try sitting in a room trying to plan these phase reopenings for our church. It's a very, it's a very important thing. It's something we need to be careful about. And uh, it, it's certainly something we need to pray about and ask God's guidance in and have peace about it when, uh, when everything's said and done. But again, it, it's just a, a storm, isn't it? It's just a trying time. And we need to know, are we flapping or are we soaring? We find it much easy in life if we will learn like the eagle and as God has uh, created us to soar. We're not created as children of God to frantically flap our wings in worry and ruin and panic and distrust. So the question we must ask ourselves tonight, how can we soar, preacher? I want to be a soar. I'm tired of flapping my wings. I'm tired tonight, preacher. How can I soar like God wants me to? How can I soar like the eagle? I mean, there's a reason why God mentioned the eagle. Because God wants us to learn to soar tonight. We can learn a thing or two from God's creation, especially the eagle. We'll look at the text here. We'll look at a few verses above verse 31. Look at verses 28 and 29. Look at what he says to the children of Israel. Verse 28, the Bible says, Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, Fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Now listen to what he says here. You want to know how to soar? Well, first thing, you need to know who God is. You need to know who your God is tonight. I want you to understand, if you're a child of the king, I want you to know who your God is. Isaiah says, hey, I know troubling times are coming, and I know the tendency is to flap your wings in panic, but Isaiah says, hey, let's take a step back, and let's look at who God is. He is, look at the description God gives himself here. He says, hast thou not known of us? This is a, one of those, those things where, where you automatically should know the answer. He's really calling their attention to, hey, you know who God is. Wake up. He's nudging them. He's, hey, wake up. Inter hey, calm down. You know who God is. Hey, child of God, I know you're worried tonight. I know you've got troubles. Maybe there's other troubles in this pandemic on your mind. I want you to understand, have you not heard of how good your God is? Do you not know your heavenly Father tonight? Want to know how to soar? Well, we've got to know who God is. Who is he? Notice what he tells the children of Israel. He says that he is the everlasting God. That means he never takes vacation. That means he always is and always has been and always will be. He'll always be here for his children. He'll always be here to help us in a time of need. He will always be present in a very a help in a time of trouble, as the Bible says. He's always there. He's the everlasting God. He is Lord tonight. He is King of kings, and he's Lord of lords. Now, I know the world looks like it's going to pot, but I want you to understand something tonight, that God is still in control. He is Lord. Amen. I'm going to help you out. I can't hear amens on here, so I'll amen myself. Amen. He is the Lord. Notice what else it says. He is the creator of the ends of the earth. 
He is the one who created this all, folks. And we can trust him. Again, that's his qualifications. How can he teach us about the eagle? He, how can God say, be like the eagle? Well, God created the eagle. God says, just like the eagle was meant to soar, you were meant to soar. I am the creator. I am almighty God. Creator of the ends of the earth. Faith is not, neither is weary. What he's saying is God never gets tired. God never gets powerless. God never gets to a point like many of us right now as we're flapping our wings, we're exhausted in worry. We're exhausted in panic. We're exhausted in fear. But God never gets that way. He's never weary. He's never powerless. He is the everlasting God. He is the creator tonight. He is the Lord. I want to know how to soar, preacher. Well, know who your God is. When you know who he is and what he's capable of, look at what it says there in the next verse. He says, he giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. God supplies the strength. God supplies the power to navigate through the troubled storms. Isaiah says, children of Israel, Jerusalem is going to be over one. Captivity is coming, and the judgment of God is coming. But I want you to know in those trying days, in those times, that God is still faithful in the midst of trouble. God is still faithful in the midst of the storm, and you can trust Him. You can know Him, and no matter how weary you may get, His strength never runs out. You can look to Him, because He's your God. He's your Heavenly Father. I say the same for us today. He is your Heavenly Father. He is your God. And you can look to Him. Know who your Heavenly Father is tonight. You want to know how to soar? Know who He is. But then you say, Preacher, how can I soar tonight? Well, you got to know who you are. i got to know who I am. We want to soar like God created us to soar. i got to know who I am. i got to know who He is, but i got to know who I am. Look at verse 30. He says, Even the youth shall faint, and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. He says, even the youths. Now, again, he talks about the youths here, but notice the phrase, even the youths. He's really saying everybody's going to grow weary, and everybody's going to faint. If you're frantically flapping your wings tonight, you're going to get tired. That raven, or that, that, uh, that robin and that sparrow, as they're flapping their wings through the hurricane, they're going to get tired. They're going to get blown into some tree. They're, they're going to face trouble. They're going to face hurt. Because they're not built to soar. Folks, let me tell you, without Christ, we can't soar. Without Jesus, we can't soar troubled times and storms. We can't face the maelstroms of life alone. We can't do life without him. We're powerless. We're, we're weary. The Bible says here in verse 30, they shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. I mean, the young men, there's denoting someone in their prime. Even the strongest of men will fall. Even the primest of men will fall. The point is, man utterly dependent of God will fall. Folks, we need him. That's why we need to know who he is. If we're going to soar and navigate, know how to navigate these troubled waters, we're going to know how to navigate this maelstrom that we're in. We're going to know how to do all that. We've got to know who he is, but we've got to know who we are. We're not able. Folks, I'm telling you, I, we're not able to face this pandemic alone. We need him. We're not able to face the troubles of life alone. But you know what's going to happen? We're going to eventually get tired of doing this number right here. We're going to fall. We don't have the strength to keep this up. We're not everlasting like God is everlasting. We're not all powerful like God is all powerful. We're not made to frantically flap. We're made to soar. The fact of the matter is without him, we can't soar. We utterly fall. And a lot of us tonight, we're buried deep in six feet of worry tonight because of everything that's going around in our world tonight, and we feel powerless, we feel faint, we feel weary. The fact of the matter is we've got to get our eyes off of who we are. We've got to get our eyes off the media. We've got to get our eyes off the White House. We've got to get our eyes off of the politicians, and we need to get our eyes back on him who is able to eradicate this mess, who is able to hold it in the palm of his hand with no problem. Even in the midst of the 
troubling time. God's not taking away this troubled time. He's letting them know it's coming. That's why he told us in this world we shall suffer persecution. We're going to see it. In the world you'll have tribulation. I preached on that a few Wednesday nights ago. We're going to have trouble. God's going to take that away every time. So we've got to learn to soar in those trying times. And we've got to understand that you and I, apart from God, we can't soar. And a lot of us tonight are doing this number right here, and we're weary, we're tired. We're not able to face it alone. We need Him. How can we soar? Know who God is. Know who we are. But then thirdly, how do I soar, preacher? The Bible says in verse 31, we've got to wait. Nobody likes that word. Nobody likes patience. But I want us to understand the Hebrew word for wait here is a little bit stronger than what our word for wait in the English language would be. So you say, preacher, what is God telling us here? I want to soar, preacher. I want to be able to be like that eagle. I, I don't want to have to be frantically flapping my wings tonight. I'm tired of that, preacher. I can't do this anymore. How do I navigate this? How do I soar, preacher? Well, you got to wait. Look at what he says in verse 31. He says, but they, they, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They that wait on the Lord. What's he talking about there? The word wait in the Hebrew means to look for. It means to expect. It means to rely on. To wait or look eagerly for. It's the idea of waiting on God. It's the idea of looking to Him for the answers. It's the idea of dependence on Him and leaning upon Him and His power and His strength. That is exactly Isaiah's point to the children of Israel. And that is God's point to us tonight in learning how to soar. God says, they that wait upon me, they that look to me, they that trust me, in me, they that lean upon me shall mount up as wings of eagles. They shall be like the eagle. They are they that soar, those that rely and trust in me. You know, I'm sorry, folks. My, my faith is not in the president. My faith is not in the White House. My faith is not in the uh, House. My faith is not in the Senate. My faith is not in the governor's mansion. My faith is not in the CDC. My faith is not in uh, what the latest, greatest articles out and tell us what to do about a mess. My faith is in God. My trust is in his ability. There's only one person, one being in this universe that can get us out of this mess. His name is Jesus Christ. We must wait upon him. As I preached a couple Sundays ago, when God, doesn't, when God doesn't take it away, apparently God's allowed us to remain in this. We are under his mighty hand. The Bible tells us to humble ourselves under his mighty hand. We understand that. He's allowed it to go on. And so therefore, in the midst of this, this time, we need to be waiting on him. We need to be looking to him. Quit worrying about what the media is telling you and get your face, get your eyes focused on who he is tonight. Trust in him. You want to soar like the eagle? Then you must trust in God. You must look to him tonight. You say, preacher, I don't know Christ my Savior. The only way you're going to soar like I'm talking about is trusting in the now scarred hand of Jesus Christ. Being dependent upon him. Allowing him Hold your life in the palm of his hands. Because he does. I want you to know the only way you and I can soar through these troubled times is by trusting him. How can we go through this in a smile? How can we go through this without frowning? How can we go through this without frantically panicking and flapping our wings like the sparrow in Rome? Well, we must wait. On the Lord. We must look to Him. We must rely on Him. Notice what He says next. We, so we must know who God is. We must know who we are. We must wait on the Lord. But then, fourthly, we must make an exchange. We must make an exchange. It's almost like a recipe here in verse 31. Notice what He says there. But they that wait upon the Lord, what happens when you rely on God? He says, They shall. Notice what He says. They that wait upon the Lord shall. It's a promise there. 
God is promising us. If we will wait, rely, trust in, the Bible says what happens to those who trust God in faith, who allow and look to him in the midst of the troubled times and the calamity and the maelstroms of life, that they that are soaring are they that are trusting. And the Bible says they shall, they shall renew their strength. The word renew is a very interesting word. It means to exchange in the Hebrew. It's the idea of taking one thing and exchanging it for another. And in context here, he's really talking about the fact that we must take our strength and give it to God. And in turn, when we give everything to God, when we look to him in the midst of the pandemic, when we look to him in the midst of trouble, when we look to him in the midst of the trials, what happens is you're saying, Lord, it's too much for me. I can't handle this. And what happens is when we give him our problems and our troubles and our trials, in return, we are granted his power, his strength, his ability to navigate the troubles of life. We have the ability to soar. We will renew our strength. We will exchange our strength for the power of God. It's no longer my strength that goes through this pandemic. It's no longer my strength or my ability. It is all about Him. It is His strength. It is His power. How can I put a smile on my face when the world is going down the pot? It's because I know the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and He's taking care of me and you. I can trust him. I can rely on him. It's not me. You say, preacher, what about the food shortage? That's all right. The Bible says he, we've never seen his seed begging bread. I preached on that about a month or two ago. He said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging bread. Because their strength is in him, not in our ability. It's not in our ability. It's not in what's going around in the media. It's not in what's going around in our world around us. Folks, it doesn't matter. None of that matters because we serve an all-powerful, all-able God. The Bible tells us in Ephesians, he's able to do more than what we think or even ask. I'm telling you tonight, we have a wonderful, wonderful Heavenly Father. We want to know how to soar. We're going to have to exchange our strength for His. I saw this in the life of my mother. Before she, she knew she was on her way out, she knew that God was going to call her home. I really believe that with all my heart, mind, and soul, especially in those last days, the last weeks, when the doctor said what she had to say. But I never caught my mom not trusting God in those days. She would smile when she could, when she felt like it. But she would always make mention of her faith and trust in God. Many of you who we're on Facebook. You watch the comments and the Bible verses she would share. You want to know how she could face cancer the way she did? Because she could soar knowing that God had everything in control. God was taking care of everything. God still does. You see, you and I can't face cancer alone. It's, it's hard. We need him. How, how, how have we seen? I look, in my life, I have seen some of the best Christian people I know go through some of the most horrific diseases, go through the most horrific trying times that, that I would even, that I, I know. I think about Brother Mike Blanton. He lost his mother last week, and then the next day he loses his sister. And yet he's on Facebook trying to encourage us and strengthen us with the Word of God. You see, that's someone who's soaring above their problems. Like an eagle. How can he do that? Well, I'll tell you how. He's exchanged his strength for God's strength. And you and I, as children of God, can do the same thing tonight. You and I can't make it. Remember, he says, you and I, we're frail. We're weak. We keep doing this number, we're going to wear out. There's only so much flapping we can do. We must look to him. And we must exchange our strength for his strength. But then lastly, we will soar. If I wait on the Lord, preacher, and when I wait on the Lord, what happens is God's strength becomes my own strength. I have given him my frailty, and he in 
exchange has given me his power and his strength to endure the winds of trouble, the winds of, of, of calamity, the winds of this pandemic, if you will. And we are able to soar, the Bible says. Look at what it says here. To renew their strength, they shall melt up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Look at this. What a wonderful promise. God supplies three strengths to the Christian whose reliance is upon him. Notice here, the Christian gains strength to soar like an eagle above his problems. If you're soaring, you're soaring up high. You're above your problems. God says, I'll give you the strength to fly above these problems. You'll fly above the storms of this life when you're relying on me. Notice what he says here. The Christian gains strength to run, giving him power to bear the greatest of troubles. Notice what he says here. They shall run and not go weary. However rough the road, however severe the struggle, however swift the pace, you will be able to keep it up. Why? Because your trust and your strength is God's. The Christian gains strength to walk, giving him patient power to go through continuous heartaches. Notice what he says here. And they shall walk and not faint. They shall walk. And not faint. No matter how hard things get, God gives you the patient power needed to endure. To be able to soar. Soar tonight. In closing tonight, I want to give you an illustration. As we learned tonight, eagles do not fly like sparrows or robins. Most birds fly through the air by flapping their wings, but eagles cannot flap very long. They are built for soaring. And thus they can go much further on little energy. God created in our planet, all right, invisible columns of hot air called thermals. They rise up and then they are from the surface of the earth. So they rise up from the surface of the earth. Eagles find these thermals and they fly into invisible currents, stretch out their wings and they are lifted higher and higher into the sky as though ascending on an elevator. I've actually seen that myself. They may rise as high as 14,000 feet in the air, so high in the heavens they cannot be seen with the naked eye from earth. When they reach those heights, they emerge from the updraft, wings still spread, and they soar this traveling for miles and miles with very little exertion of strength. Isaiah seems to be telling us that God is invisible, but like the invisible uplifting thermal currents of this planet, he is present for his people. He's present for you. He's present for me tonight. When we search him out, claim his promises in this passage of scripture, and trust in him, spreading out the wings of faith, we are called up to a higher plane, folks. We mount up with wings as eagles. We can run and not go weary. We can walk and not faint. The strength we need for holy, effective, victorious living comes not from frantically flapping our wings like sparrows in distress, but from trusting God and resting in Jesus Christ. I ask you tonight, are you frantically flapping? You're not built for flapping. You can't do that, but for so long, you're going to go crazy. God says, you were built to soar. You're soar. And just as those invisible thermal pockets that lift up the eagle, so we have faith in the invisible God that allows us and trust to him soar above the greatest storms in life with motionless effort on our part. This evening, are you flapping or are you soaring? It's a question you've got to ask yourself and I have a feeling in the coming days we're going to need to learn more about soaring than we ever have. Let us be soars, not flappers. God bless you. Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for the message. We thank you for the power in your word. Lord, I'm thankful tonight that we don't have to frantically flap, flap our wings in panic. But we can soar through the roughest tempest. We can soar through the roughest hurricanes of life. 
when we trust in you and know who you are. Lord, help us to be sores. Help us not to be flappers. In your precious and holy name we do pray. Amen. Amen. We'll see you Sunday at 1030 at Drive-In Church or out here online as always. It'll be live streamed as well. God bless you all. Well, hello there. Well, we're so thankful you could tune in to one of our services online. I hope that uh, you enjoyed your time with us. Uh, we, we're so excited to have you uh, be a part of our online worship. Uh, just wanted to know if you made any kind of spiritual decision or anything like that. We would love to hear about it. Uh, you could let us know by messaging our Facebook page, or you could email me personally at preacherman83 at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you, uh, if you made a spiritual decision, giving your life to the Lord, uh, whatever that may be, uh, we would love to, to encourage you in that, but also know and pray for you. Uh, again, I'm going to invite you, if you don't have a home church already and you live in the Greenville, Belvoir, Belvoir area, we would love to have you come join us. You can find the service times on our Facebook page, our website. Uh, and we would just love to have you come join us if you're in the area local or if you're out of state and you're just coming through the area we'd love for you to stop on in and be a part of our service uh, but anyway just wanted to let you know that and again as I always tell uh, my people uh, your pastor loves you call me if you need me and we'll talk to you all later God bless bye bye